You know, the view is always different uh, from the field. George Reitster had that view for years. He is a former tight end with the Jacksonville Jaguars. He's also the host of The Nightcap on Sirius XM's Mad Dog Radio, and he hosts the Reitster or Wrong podcast. And also, the investigative journalist Declan Hill uh, is an expert, just so happens, on match fixing and corruption in sports. He's also the author of The Fix, Soccer and Organized Crime. Welcome to, to both of you. I'm sure that you saw that interview, guys, and I don't know if it, you know, struck to your heart the way it did to mine to hear it, you yeah. know, straight from his mouth. But George, let me just ask you, th these are very serious allegations. That's, you know, obvious. But what do you know about Brian Flores? Because as I understand it, you've got a lot of friends who work closely with him. Yeah, I actually know a couple people on Brian's last staff in Miami and a couple of players as well who played for him. And all of them are willing to run through a wall for this man. And the fact that he was portrayed as a guy who was difficult, hard to work with. And then I thought about it, I was like, yeah, he was difficult and hard to work with because he wouldn't tank games for you and then he wouldn't go and tamper with Tom Brady in the offseason, which was against the the rules so in that way yeah he was difficult but the the <laughs> consistent thing that they all say is his leadership and his ability to communicate and be a leader of men that it was a special ability and now uh he's looking for a job and also he's suing the nfl so george this is a, a straight up question uh there's it's an easy answer uh do you believe all the things that he has said in his lawsuit that the NFL is cheating and that the NFL is racist? I, I, I believe that there are that there are instances where teams tank, right? Because they have started this whole campaign tank for Tua, uh, for Tua Ta Tagovailoa, who they ended up being able to draft anyway. And but. Football and sports is supposed to be a meritocracy. The best man is supposed to win. The people who score the most points. And to think that a coach or an organization would not be trying, that doesn't feel good to the players because the players are always trying. You can't get the players to not try, but you can put them in situations where they cannot succeed. But to your second question about is the NFL racist? Well, there are either some racist owners or there's some subconscious bias because there's no reason why 70 plus percent of the players are black. And then those those guys are talked about as, you know, experts in the game, that they're coaches on the field, that they're great leaders and all of that. But then when it comes to leading a team off the field, it just becomes a lot more difficult. So either owners have trouble with with identifying and connecting with somebody who's not from the same background and and history as them. And they're not looking at it like, oh, this looks like my my son. This looks like my nephew, my my grandson. We have some common experiences. So I think you can either say it's racist or that they're subconscious bias, that they just won't let that you know, uh, pass to be able to hire what is really the best man for the job. And just so I have absolute clarity on the first question too, uh, do you believe that this um, allegation of, of tanking, uh, throwing games uh, goes beyond the Dolphins? Uh, yes, at, at, at times. I mean, if you look at the Philadelphia 76ers, everybody knew that they were tanking. They called it trust the process. So yes, there are teams that set up their rosters. Like, like they don't go out <laughs> and say, hey guys, let's go lose the game today. No, what they do is, is they set up the roster that way you're going to lose games because it's, it, it's a talent game. Yes, coaching matters. Yes, scheme matters, and that can help you out a little bit. But if you put a team at a disadvantage talent-wise, then they're going to lose more games than they're going to win. So that's how they do it more than so just say, hey, hey guys, go out and lose games. Because the players won't do that because they their livelihood is dependent upon playing well. Same thing. Yeah, different strategy. So, Declan, I want to bring you in on this because you're the, the guy that sort of does the deep dive and drill down on 
the stats, the numbers, the facts. And so we compared Flores's record, you know, with the Dolphins with the last two years with other coaches who um, were with their teams for a similar amount of time, trying to get, you know, the samples as accurate as possible. And Brian Flores's record was 19 and 14 with the Dolphins, and he was the first Miami coach to have back-to-back -back winning seasons since um, 03. That's pretty impressive. And then we went on to Mike McCarthy, the Cowboys. He was only 18 and 15. Uh, Ron Rivera with Washington was 14 and 19. And uh, Matt Rule with the uh, Panthers was 10 and, and 23. And yet those three guys are all still employed. Those three guys are also, also white. Um, can't Flores's record speak for itself? And I don't know that that's enough for, you know, the bar in, in court, but it sure is obvious to me, and I don't know much about football. Look, uh, what we're dealing with here is, you know, Brian Enton's excellent story, George's cover um, of, of these issues. This is the single most explosive issue in North American sports now. Every sports fan knows that the owners have been accessing, enabling, tanking, for decades. Look, there's the Major League Baseball is right now involved in a lockout of their players. And one of the things the players want is to stop the tanking. It's in the labor negotiations. The baseball players are saying, look, we're tired of tanking. So have there been more cases of tanking, deliberate fixing in the National Football League than these allegations now? Yes. And it's the number one issue which is going to face the National Football League. Because it doesn't matter about concussions. It doesn't matter about doping. But if the fans start watching the National Football League and saying, you know what, I just don't believe it. I just don't believe that miraculous play, whether it's good or whether it's bad. I just don't believe it. This is what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with a really serious issue. In terms of the racism, look, if only a third of the allegations and that explosive, to use Brian's word again, statement of claims are accurate, if it walks like a duck, if it talks like a duck, it's a duck. And this is a league with serious systemic problems of racism. I should do one quick correction. I, I said that the three guys, the three other coaches that I mentioned were all white and actually Ron Rivera is Latino, but uh, they're not black, I Correct. should say as well. Hey, George. Um, Something that Declan just said was it really resonated with me because it brought me back to the old quiz show that the trust, right? If the fans yep. start yep. distrusting this process, this game, well, that's the ball of wax, right? Because this is, in its essence, a contest every day. So I wanted to ask you about the, the, the credibility factor because some of the folks who aren't in the camp with Brian Flores are saying, oh, sure, you say this right after you get fired. Is there any problem with the proximity to making the complaint uh, with the firing in terms of just the credibility and how it will be digested? See, I, I, I didn't take it like that because he's still up for a number of jobs right now. So, and there's a lot of people who would have bowed out or said, yeah, nah, this isn't the time for me to try to pull a lawsuit or to bring these issues out into the light because I still have a chance to be a head coach. Let me take care of me. But the fact that Brian Flores was willing to put his career on the line, it shows what type of man that he is. But I wanted to make one thing clear is that there's a lot of people who have been in my mentions on Twitter or anything and said, oh, well, do you guys want affirmative action and you want a quota? No, there should not be a quota on the number of black head coaches that there, that there are, but they should get fair opportunities. They should be able to go in there and not need a Rooney rule to get an interview. So there's something systemically wrong with it if you even need a Rooney rule to get guys interviewed. And that, yes, there are plenty of white qualified head coaches that should be given opportunities. So, so that's not the issue. The issue is just that black head coaches have not been given the opportunity. And then it seems like the onus is on them to fix it because people say, oh, how, do you, how are you guys gonna fix it? How do you fix it? I don't know <laughs> because I didn't create the problem. Mm -hmm. Like, let's talk to the people who created the problem and get them to fix it.
I love that you have this attitude, like, don't ask me, it's your problem, you know, but gosh, if you look at it, 2022, hello, here we are, 32 teams, one African-American head coach named Mike Tomlin of the of the Steelers, and I hear you, uh, it's frustrating that you have to codify the process just to try to stimulate, you know, the movement of getting more diversity into the leadership on the field. Guys, you're great. Uh, thank you so much for this. I really appreciate it. Uh, George Reister and Declan, Hill joining me um, on this extraordinarily important story. Again, I don't even know football, and you have me at hello on this one. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.